Shaber 1000 here. Uh, today we're going to be working on this. <clears throat> it's a Kohler engine simplicity tractor. Uh, when it's running, after it runs for a minute, the carburetor starts filling up with gas and it wants to hydrolock. So let's pull that bowl off there and see what we got going on in it to float. Okay, so I figure what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull this carburetor off. It's pretty simple on this one. Someone has had a problem with this somewhere down the line. This wire does not belong on here. So I'm not sure what gives there. But we have to take this off for to get the bowl off but i'm going to take the carburetor off and see what we can do there now what this does when you turn the key off there's a little needle valve under here now the older ones you could adjust them right there but when you shut the key off it shuts the fuel off to the carburetor it's supposed to not let any more fuel go into it well it's also known as an anti-backfire valve. Keeps it from, you know, when you shut your, your mower off sometimes, as it dies down, as soon as it stalls, it'll backfire. It's supposed to keep that from happening too. But, uh, someone's had an issue with that before. So, we're gonna start by taking these two nuts off of here. I think it's a 10. Yes, it is. So I had this ready. Now, um, also, this clamp is not all the way on to the carburetor, so someone's had the carburetor off too. So, not sure what's going on there, but we're gonna try to find out. I have to get, Monkey wants me to cut the grass today. So it is getting high, but I can't use hers because the tire's flat. That tire's flat, but that one's clear off the bead. So I thought I'd go ahead and do this. This hose here just comes out of the valve cover. Right there, there's a hole there. That's where this goes. So this comes off. Try not to lose them nuts. So let's, uh, that fuel line is very stiff. I'm gonna have to go get some needle nose pliers, try to take this fuel line off. I don't know if I've got any that size. I should have, but I don't know. Um, we'll just have to see. So yeah, that's, uh, I don't know what's going on. What they tried to do there, but it's also a screw behind here that uh, that needs to be tightened up. So let me go get some pliers, and maybe it looks like a five sixteenths. I don't know. Maybe it's a ten. No, it's more like five sixteenths or eight millimeter. I already have fuel line unhooked to the fuel pump. So that shouldn't be an issue. All right, let me get some tools. Okay, got my needle on those pliers here. I'll have to, I forgot to look. Let's see if I got any of these rubber lines. Uh, I guess I should have brought a straight pair. I thought these curved ones would be better. There we go. Yeah, that's, that line's bad. Yeah. Line's in bad shape. Try not to 
hurt my gasket here. Well, let's go ahead and we'll unscrew this down here, just the ground wire. It's been off there before. Am I recording? Um, yeah, when you get something like this, uh, you know, used, you don't know what someone else has done and why, you know, see like that. They've made spacers with a washer and a nut. That's not right. It's not the way it's supposed to be. And so now we can just flip this carburetor. I want to show you guys something as soon as I get this off here, if I don't forget. These plastic, there's a plastic thing right here. I want to get it off so I can give you a close up. Sometimes if your engine's surging, you know, revving kind of up and down, a lot of times it's that piece of plastic worn and it's letting your, that's your governor, your governor arms down there. This is your governor rod. Looks like it's bent. A lot of times what will happen, there we go, is when that gets worn out, you know, the governor can't do its job properly. So it'll cause it to surge up and down. Okay, let's, this is, looks like it's just plugged in over here. Let me get you over here where you can see. Let's go ahead and unplug this. All right. Now, let's take this somewhere out of the sun so we can work on it. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this off. See, there's a little jet right there. And it looks clean. So the bowl, yeah, there's, see these little dents in here? That's from somebody tapping on it. I tapped on it a couple times myself. But what happens is when this float goes up, it's supposed to shut the gas off. If it's staying down, if it's stuck in the down position, it's not going to shut the gas off. So, I mean, it looks to me like it's nice and free, but there could be a piece of dirt in here that, uh, that's stopping it from going all the way up and shutting it off. So let's pull this out. There's our, ooh, that's as hard as a rock. And I don't know if you guys can, how well you guys can see down in there, but there's a bunch of junk. Uh, of course not. Anyway, there's a bunch of junk down in there. But this is a rub this is rubber. And it's hard as a rock, like the fuel line. So I don't have one of these. I'm probably just gonna buy another carburetor for it. Um I could buy a rebuild kit, but that's probably why right there. That is probably, it's not sealing, because that rubber's not, you know, it's not flexible. I'm surprised that wasn't leaking right there. So what I'm going to do, I mean, the carburetor's not dirty. A little bit of stuff in there, not bad. It's not like real corroded. Uh, we'll see if I can get that limbered up a little bit. I doubt it. I know I don't have one of these that'll fit this. 
but that could be why it's not you know when it's all the way up up against there supposed to shut it off if it's hard as a rock uh, chances are it's not going to form around the way it's supposed to so let me clean this up a little bit I'm not gonna bore you with that I'm just gonna spray it with some stuff and then uh, yeah it looks pretty good in there except for right in there I'll get some pipe cleaners and put in there and we'll see uh, see if that helps it I don't know we'll find out all right so I got the carburetor back together <clears throat> I did clean the inside of this up it wasn't real bad I found this line it's a little stiff but at least it's clear it is a fuel line uh, but I'm gonna have to dip it in some hot water well it'll go on but I may have to dip it in some hot water um, and we're gonna take it back here we're, let's go put this thing back together I'll get some hot water ready just in case we need to use it I don't think it's going to have to be that long. It's only probably going to have to be half that long. Okay, so let's get back here in the back. Whew, it's a hot one out today. And um, get this thing together and see if we can get it running the way it should be. It runs fine. It just uh, it starts flooding out. You just start seeing a bunch of fuel uh, filling up in there. And the last time I tried to start it to cut the grass, I had to pull the spark plug and blow some of the gas out of it because it it actually hydro locked on me for those of you that don't know what that means is the cylinder uh, liquids can't compress you know air compresses liquids don't and if your cylinder gets full of uh, a fuel that's a liquid it can't compress it'll start to it's just like you got something there it won't turn and that's not good for the cylinder because you can do you can uh, cause what's called a washout on your cylinder uh, that's not good either that didn't happen I caught it in time but it could over time and what it does is keep it you know your cylinders lubricated there's oil in there to a certain extent there's a light film of oil uh, if you wash that off of there you're just running them rings up and down that cylinder dry and you can uh, not only ruin the rings which kind of sucks but it's not as bad as ruining the whole cylinder so we're, and then you gotta go get it reboard sometimes you can bring it back by honing it I've heard people say you, you can't hone them small engines well I find that to be bullshit <laughs> so you know to the guy I've seen say that on YouTube he's full of shit you can hone them I think this is gonna be all right now let's go back and put it on and let's see if it, if it's not then we'll have to uh, try to find the issue but the uh, the floats working fine you blow through this and you get air and you flip it upside down you don't so uh, there's a number on here that I'll have to look up and see what these things cost they're not very much they're like 25 or 30 bucks I know they're the cheap ones, uh, um, but this is a Nikki, a Nikki carburetor. So I know, but you know, for around here, it's going to be fine. Let's go back and put it on. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're going to get this put back on here. It's just kind of backward from what we did to put it on. I've got me a pan of hot water over there. I've got. Come on. I've got a. I've got my hose in there. Now these clamps are not going to work on this uh, on the fuel line that I've got because uh, they're too big. But I think it's going to stay on all right because it's got these. Uh, these nubs here to help hold it on so this is not a permanent fix anyway because I'm going to be taking this carburetor off which will come with a new line because I have looked these up before monkeys messaging me 
so it will come with a new line um, so let's get this hooked up um, I checked this it is working the solenoid it is working so I don't think there's an issue with that I think people just if they don't know a lot about these things the first thing they start doing is replacing parts because so-and-so said it's probably this or so-and-so said it could be that and these are the people that tell them this stuff without even looking at the machine like you put new fuel filter uh, new or yeah new fuel filter a new line that's all on the other side a uh, new uh, fuel pump because someone told him it was a fuel pump wasn't getting enough fuel actually what it was doing it was flooding out getting too much fuel that's why it was stalling I believe he told me he put a new coil on it or had a new coil put on it um, because it would run a few minutes and stall out well yeah that that can cause that but you know without looking at it you can't make that decision you know uh, so what it was doing was just filling up the bowl or filling up the carburetor the intake of the carburetor with fuel it was flooding itself out so all right well all right I got this on there I'll spring this over here and plug it in which I'm gonna have to redo because that's not the right way to do that and I'll have to get the uh, Oh, drop some fuel line. Not good. I'll have to get the. Uh, looks like it could use a fuel filter replace. But I forget what I was going to say now. Oh, I gotta go get the battery charger. Bring it back and uh, put it on boost we're going to see what happens and if it runs okay and don't fill this up with fuel like it did before and I'll go ahead and put the filter back or the cleaner air cleaner back on and everything so I'm going to go ahead and tighten these two bolts and we'll start it up okay guys this is going to be very loud so if you're wearing headphones be mindful of that uh, I got my charger on boost I did crank it a couple times to make sure it was going to crank and to prime that so it should be primed I'm going to close the choke and let's see what happens Okay, it's only wanting to run on choke, so it's starving for fuel. It's got fuel in it there. It's got fuel in here. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Could be, that line's kind of small, but still it should have enough fuel to run it. Okay, well, let me dig around and let's see what's going on with it. Okay, guys, so I found a piece of line that is the right size. It's not the greatest, but it'll work for now. Like I said, when I get a new carburetor, I'll uh, put a new piece of line on it. 
Watch your headphones, guys. Okay, so it's running, but it's not running real well. So there's definitely something in that carburetor. Uh, it kinda, it's kinda act like it may need a head gasket too. I'm not sure, but we'll check all that out later. That should be enough to get me to cut the grass. So let's go try to cut the grass with it. I think I found a problem. <laughs> it stalled on me. I was mowing it was, it was running pretty rough so stalled on me while I was mowing so I brought it back took the carburetor part and I used q-tips you know cotton buds whatever you want to call them cotton swabs clean that out and when I cleaned that uh, solenoid out uh, there must have been a piece in it because when I pulled that jet back off that little tiny jet had a piece of cotton in there so I started up seems to be running all right now I'm gonna start it up again so watch your ears guys So, I'm going to set you down here in the shade, <laughs> and let's try this again. headlight the uh, lens the cover the headlights themselves are okay but they're just bulbs it's just a cover came off it's all brittle and cracked from being out in the sun too long the heat then all the heat from up underneath the hood and stuff seems to be running fine now so some fresh gas I think I'm just gonna go ahead and order another carburetor seems to be running fine now I can keep that for a backup um, but yeah just uh just cleaned it out real good and seems to be doing all right now so uh it's not it's not um flooding out like it was you know so we got that problem fixed uh, might have just been a little bit of dirt but that carburetor looked fairly clean so but uh i could probably rebuild that one but 
for five or ten dollars more, I can just get a whole nother carburetor. I get another carburetor and throw on there and new fuel line, fresh gas. And I think it'll be good to go. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Not really how to as it is what we're doing. So just thought I'd bring you along with that. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, I think I'll I need a wheel for this deck for this side of the deck here. It's going to need a set of blades, so I think I'll put some blades, just kind of go over it. It'll be ready to rock and roll, so. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Shea Bear, the myth, the man, the legend, I'm gone for now. It's 86 degrees with a real feel of 96. Well, I'm going with the 96 because that's what it really feels like to me. So, anyway, guys, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye and take care.